Hi everybody, welcome to my 12th torsional bar video. In this video, I'm going to be solving this statistically indeterminate composite bar you see here. I'm going to find the internal torques in the middle piece, the outside piece, the twist at the very end, and also I'm just going to talk about how to find the shear stress in this. If you want to see another example of statistical indeterminacy in torsional bars, or something else about torsional bars, feel free to check out any of my other videos. So the first thing we want to do to find the internal torque is going to be to expose that internal torque. And like always, in order to expose something internal, we make a cut. All right, we'll do that here, we'll look this way, and we'll make a free body diagram of that piece. Okay, there we go. So you might have noticed why didn't I draw a torque up here? Well, basically, this outside piece of metal is like you know some sort of like cylinder of metal. Okay, so the torque that's provided in response to this torque is going to be acting over that whole piece. All right, it kind of looks like a, a pineapple ring. And the resistive torque is going to be resisted over that whole piece. So if we're looking at it from the side really this whole piece is only giving one torque in response so we can just draw the torque as one if you want it to be really precise you could say this is t naught by two and make another one here t naught by two but i'll say it again the torque that's provided in resistance to this torque by the outer casing is just a single torque and like always we can write All right, there we go. So that's our first equation. Let's just label that with a one. And that's our equilibrium equation. All right, now, of course, we can't find you know, TM, TO, just by looking at any further equilibrium. So we need to go to displacement, just like we did in the axial world. All right, now we're going to look at displacement in a torsional bar world, and that's a twist. So this plate here, this kind of blacker looking plate, it's connected to the two of these, you know, columns and you know, casings, and so when you twist it with this torque T, well, it's actually this way, both of those pieces of different metal are going to twist the same amount. All right, so we can write that the twist of the middle is equal to the twist of the outside. All right, it's that simple. That's our equation of compatibility, you could call it. And from there, we can write, because we know that phi in any piece is due to the torsion, length, and gj. So, of course, the phi in the middle piece is due to the properties of the middle piece, and the same for the phi of the outside. So, we can write that. And here's our second equation, Tm, T, T middle, T outside, T middle, T outside, and everything else we know. And in our case, the length is the same for both. So we can just cross these out. And then we can write Tm, or T in the middle, or rearranging it the other way, solving for the other variable, we could say the torque in the outside
All right, so these are essentially the same expressions. I've just you know, put tm equal to something and t the outside equal to something. And this will help when we actually go and find tm as itself. So let's go ahead and take this. Let's just call it 2m and this 2o. We'll plug 2m into 1 and 2o into 1 and we'll solve for the middle, torque in the middle and the torque in the outside for each of these pieces. All right. All right, and by virtue of the same reasoning, we can solve this piece here. All right, so there you have it, the torque in the outside piece and the torque in the middle piece. Now note the striking you know, similarity between these equations. The only difference is that this piece here is flipped over. All right, so that's you know two things. First of all, it allows you to check whether you did it right. This equation looks vastly different than this one in terms of the overall symmetry, then you've probably done something wrong. Second, it goes to tell you how the torques are distributed in this statistically indeterminate case it has to do with the properties of the piece rather than just you know the forces or the torques on the piece All right so that's kind of interesting so let's keep on going and go ahead and solve for the overall displacement now we know displacement or twist is equal to this and the two twists equal each other so we can really find the overall twist just by looking at any one of these twists All right. in my case I'll just pick the look at the twist in the middle piece but in reality you know it's a twist of the outside piece and you know it's all the same so we'll just call it phi because it doesn't matter which piece you take and like I said I'm using the middle one so then I'm gonna look at T in the middle one L in the middle one over G J all right and the length of the middle one, so that's just equal to L, it's all the same. Uh, G middle one has its own, J of the middle one has its own, and T we have right here. So, substituting those values in. All right, so that's probably pretty convoluted. All right, it's pretty big. You could probably do some algebra to rearrange that. I like to keep my torques with these big fractions on the bottom, just so that if we have just you know a ratio of G's or a ratio of J's, we can just cross it out. If you want, you can go in and do some algebra. I like to just keep it this way. So this is just you know T in that piece, L over G, J. All right, and I said, what about shear? So I'm not going to explicitly solve shear, but you might be 
watching this to find out how to solve shear. All right, that's uh, tau. And we know the general equation for tau is the internal torque times the radius over j. All right, so after we solved for the torque in the middle and the torque on the outside, all you do is just plug it in this equation here. So let's say we could say tau in the outside piece is due to the t in the outside piece, the radius of the outside piece, or the radius at some point in the outside piece, or j of the outside piece. And of course, the maximum value would be when r at it is at its max or at the very outside. All right. So if we needed to find it, what is the overall max? You need to compare the maximum in the middle, and the middle, and the outside one. And then you take which one is bigger. In this case, it would depend on which g or which j is bigger. All right. So that brings us to the end of this torsion bar video. Uh, hope to help you out, and I'll see you in my next torsion bar video.